You're listening to the Living Adventures Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Ashley Milky and Victoria Vance. Tune in for a new episode every Thursday to hear our honest conversations about topics like freedom, creativity, spirituality, luxury living, health and wellness, and above all else, building community. We have real and unfiltered conversations inspired by our search to feel connected to people who give a shit about us, support our dreams, and understand our struggles. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to navigate any moment in your life with the lens of your neurodivergent mind, with a community who gets you. Adventure on. Hello, everyone. We are going to be continuing the conversation from last week, and that's going to start off on talking more about ways perfectionism shows up, making content for ourselves micro celebrity strategies and how to use that in every area of your life not even just like for people showing up online this is just for the multi-passionate part of adhd is how to find what you want to focus on and understand how to use all of those things that we're great at as well as defining what adhd means to you so let's go get into that see you later and I think for me, like the, the podcast has been helpful in like showing how that's done. It's also so hard to sometimes show in like a one minute video. And so that's totally. why one like this helps make it easier and can like supplement. And I've noticed in myself, like I have an easier time about talking about it because we might've talked about something in the podcast and then I can slowly start sharing that and incorporating that in a certain way and everything. And like something like you talked about is like, I always hated that business content right off the bat of like 10K in 10 days and whatever. And it's like, I saw a post this morning of like, what, how do you still post content when you're burnt out? And she basically was like, I'm creating content. She's like a social media creator. She's like, I'm making UGC for my, uh, my, I'm like, how about you don't have to? Literally, how do you make and content like, when you're burnt out? Don't, 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 don't. And then she was like, repost and do this and do don't. this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you can but like, how do I, I want, how do I make, con- how do I not have to make content when I'm burnt out, but still make sales? Literally. And you know what it is. That's what we want. Literally. Yeah. And it's, so the program I'm about to come out with is called Burnout Breakup. And literally my whole theory around burnout, just as a little side tangent and really any issues, right? It could be burnout. It could be imposter syndrome. It could be perfectionism. Like the strategies people are sprinkling on top never gets to the root issue. Because if you're thinking I need to post while I'm burnt out, the root issue is your mentality around money, work, and success. Why do you think you need to post to make money? Why do you think you need to always work every single day? Why do you think you're not allowed to have rest? Those are huge things that I had to work through to stop burning myself out. Why? I didn't think I deserved to rest, which now I know goes back to perfectionism because I thought I had to work hard to earn love. And that's just toxic. So that goes back to that. But that's through everything that we're talking about here, right? Right? Like when it comes to these different ADHD strategies or business strategies, like what's the sprinkle that is not allowing you to get to the actual root of what's going on? Like wh- what are people telling you to do? Oh, I made, ugh, I saw I made 5K in two days. I'm like, how long have you been in business? Because you didn't make that in two days. Sure, you collected the money in two days, but you've been posting for a year. You've been doing this for two months. You've been talking about this offer for 47 days. Like, okay, you did not make it in two days. So that's the sprinkle on top. And then for me, when I see that kind of content, I'm like, Why does that person think they need to put that kind of content out? Like what's their internal belief system that they think they need to prove that they made this much money in this fast of time? Because for me, I used to think I I had to share how much money I was making to get clients because I thought I had to prove myself, which goes back to, again, perfectionism if we circle back to the top of the episode. So like there's like all of these things that you can think about is like, hmm, what? And I think it's like if we just slow down, it's like what is driving this? For everything, for my depression, I could have been like, hmm, what is driving this? What? what are these feelings coming from? What do I need to do to honor these feelings for how to manage your ADHD? Why am I feeling these feelings? What, what, what's, where is this coming from? I think that's a huge question you can ask. And like something, whenever I feel I'm like, I shouldn't post this or anything is, you know, there's a lot of trends right now. And there has been in the past of like, when you say mean things, I'm saying it to her. And then you see like the old picture of yourself is like, or like, I can't believe like I only made this much money like what we're making this much money or whatever is like I kind of think about like should I post this or not and I'm like would this have been helpful for me years ago such a good question and it's like if yes then it's like okay then we're gonna post it or like is this needed out there it's like have I seen this out there and I asked myself that and like that kind of helps me like form it and so even though like one I've talked about this a hard time like I have is like I don't see it done and so it's like I am feeling like the first one that's doing it 
in certain ways. And then so when that's copied, that hurts more Mm -hmm. because it's like I'm really trying to push a barrier here. And then like, oh, let me copy that and everything. And nobody sees that. And like that feels bad. And like obviously that's something I have to work on and everything. But it goes to the point of seeing is really helpful. But if you don't have that, show and be the person that like you wish you could have seen what would have helped you what would you wish you had known and everything and it's like I have a lot of parents that genuinely follow me and even though like they're not looking for coaching because like sometimes they don't even have ADHD they're just looking for like those things so that they can help their kid a little bit earlier in life and how they interact in certain things and like that to me is like so meaningful that like they're already preemptiving like things of like how to help their kid in the future as well as right now things that they can be doing a little bit better not that i'm necessarily like even teaching that but like as i say things that would have helped me a little bit earlier they're like let me start implementing that now like let maybe that maybe it helps them maybe it doesn't they'll start figuring things out and everything and like that's so helpful that's so true yeah I think like like obviously a, a lot of times we can think about that where we're like who is the person I'm gonna help by posting this thing right but I think what you said at the beginning of like would you have learned from this would you have benefited from this gives us that internal validation because a lot of times when we post we're like will people like this external validation how many views am I gonna get external validation I saw this awesome content creator and I can't remember who it was I was scrolling on Instagram and they were like sometimes your content and your creative process is actually just between you and you and it doesn't matter how many views it gets it doesn't matter who likes it it is a process between yourself and yourself and as long as you have that creative process that's all that needed to happen and a lot of times if you create from that place where you're like I'm creating to serve myself that's the video that gets the most views that's the video that touches the most people because you had no other intention than serving your creative needs or serving who you were or what you needed to hear in the past or what you needed to hear today because there are times when I create content and I'm like this is some shit I just told myself in a journaling session and I need to share it with the world because I need to process it out loud too that one is the most authentic self that you can come out of. That's why it always goes. And it's also like, I see counts all the time of like, they started creating for themselves and they blew up the fastest. And that's why it's because they're not doing it for anybody else. Because when you're doing it for external validation, for sales, everything, like that's where it kind of goes down. Where like, I don't do heavy sales things. I share client stories. I share my story. I do this because it's like, I make what I wish could have been seen because I get frustrated by a lot of ADHD content. And I'm like, I know I'm not the only one. And people tell me that and everything. And like, that's, to me, that's the validation I like. It's not necessarily always a sale. It's about, oh, you, like, this was helpful. Like, I wanted this. This is why I follow you. This is helpful to understand. This is a great new way of thinking about things. Oh, this makes so much sense. This kind of like pulled a lot of thoughts I've been having together. And it's so helpful for me to hear that. What was I talking about? Why it's so part, uh, oh, making content like for yourself, like oh. that's the stuff that goes the most riled. That's the accounts that stay there the longest. That's the ones that have the most authenticity. That's the ones like you would, with brand deals, like people's accounts fall off with brand deals because they're just catching the bag for certain things and everything. Something I hate, like I literally judge in my own personal mind, I guess, any content creator that's doing like the ADHD app stuff and like all the diagnosing ones, not in a sense that like they're catching their bag at the expense of other people. And it's because there's mm. so many issues with those apps and everything. And it's like, I understand like with some people that is the only way you can get a diagnosis. And I am mm. not judging that part, but I am judging pushing these companies and the issues we know that they cause and what they do, the harm. Cause I see it in my clients' lives. I have a lot of clients who've been diagnosed in those things and like had so many issues beyond the thing, scammed out of so much money, so many health issues that like this genuinely should not exist. And it's like, I see that I cannot confidently do that, but like so many creators do. And to me, like that shows inauthenticity that shows a lot of issues. Like you're catching the bag at the expense of other people's lives. I think don't also something that we do is like hyper fixate on us authenticity and so it's just like Mm -hmm. just show up what you want say the stupid thoughts don't that's why like I don't do it more than two or three times like give yourself a max like show up as you have a conversation 
Yeah, that's so true. And you're so right. That's how people grow the fastest. And it was so hard for me for a long time because I like grew up the fastest, like not being my authentic self. And so like, then it really effed me up to try to be my authentic self and then like it not go viral. And it's cause I'm still not being my authentic self because I'm actually masking cause I'm a perfectionist. And that was revealed to me on Friday too. So it's another thing that effed me up that it was like, oh, actually none of your content has been authentic because not in a bad way. Like I'm trying to be who I think people need me to be, but I'm not being myself. And then I got rewarded because I have a video that has 7,000 views right now because I was being myself and I'm a weirdo and I'm like, okay. And it's like hard because I am I feel like you in a lot of ways where like you don't see yourself in terms of like people who have ADHD online. I feel like I don't see myself at all. Like I think about like, I was like talking to my coach and I was like, I don't know. I feel like, you know, Victoria's got this ADHD community, right? It seems easy. Like here's your community. They're already identifying themselves. And I'm like, who's my community? Like who the F am I trying to talk to? Because, you know, and I'm like in my head, I'm a perfectionist. So I'm like trying to figure out who is it is. I'm like, it's a business coach. Is it this kind of people? Who is it? And it's like, actually, it doesn't matter who it is because you just have to be yourself and whoever it is will come. And that's the biggest lesson I think we all need to know is that like, you don't like F the niche, F the effing niche. Like stop trying to figure out who people want you to be, to like you and love you and want to watch you and want to hang out in your space. Like you get to just be you and the people who like you will show up. And if you do that, the brands you enjoy will want to work with you. And if you hold out for those brands, you'll make a lot more money that way. And the people, like you'll literally post whatever you want and feel so excited about it. Like that is all I desire for my clients, for myself, is like, I don't want to have to be Ashley the business coach. Cause that's not all I am. I don't want to be Ashley the life coach who gives confidence tips. Like I've literally thought of every iteration of who I can be in a silo, the business coach, the life coach, the girl who just shares about her life, the girl who just makes videos about I don't know, clothes, drinks, whatever. But I'm all of those things. Like I am a whole dynamic human. And I think the perfectionist in me thinks that I ha- I've never seen anyone like me because no one is like you, right? Like you can go look all over the internet and find fragments of who you are and other content creators. And you could, if you are admiring a content creator and feeling imposter syndrome, a lot of times it's just because you see yourself in that person and you can see pieces. But the hard thing is you're never gonna see your whole self. So I would say one for you, go back, you know that worksheet that you have? I don't know if you remember this, um, but it's like, I don't, I don't if you don't want me to say this online, you don't. Have, you can take this part out. Uh, like the expertise, your freak factor, your whatever thing is like. celebrity, yeah. I always go back to that, and so it's like that. that is my niche. Those things, everything on there. Like I think with ADHD, mm. like I see this in a lot of my clients. Like obviously, I'm not like the multi passionate struggle. But, like. The multi-passionate struggle is like, you are all of those things. You get to Mm -hmm. attract people with all of those things. That's also why like a lot of like neurodivergent friends and everything is so important and not necessarily like that you have to only be friends with neurodivergence or anything, but like you'll naturally attract when you can like be in alignment with those passions. And like you can state those to yourself and you can allow yourself to be them and to share them. You do not need to stick to one thing. And I think something that I get stuck in that thing. Oh, people watch every single video. They're gonna be confused if they do that and everything. And I think because I know with my audience and with ADHD is like a lot of times they'll like go watch 40 videos in a row. And not yeah. necessarily that that's good or anything, but like that could be confusing and I'm like scared for that and everything. And you know, it's like, you know what? They'll figure it out. They'll figure yeah, it out because totally. they have that same thing. And like we say is like people can follow you for different things. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. always have to be the same thing. Niche is stupid but I think we think of niche with the all or nothing approach where niche has to be one thing or it cannot be many and so it's like I think your niche is you and like that encapsulates like that's what I tell all my clients is like it encapsulates my clients like like, that whole list yeah and the second thing is in my mental rehearsals that I do with a lot of clients I always add a line and it's like when you're in alignment of yourself like why not be you because you are the only person in the world that can show up as you nobody has the same lived experiences nobody can show up like you nobody like people can have the same ideas people can copy your ideas and come to similar conclusions but they won't have done it in the same way that you have and so share it because even if it only helps one person you helped one person yeah or like we said um (laughs) you just got your creative process out and done but for everyone we can totally keep this part in like for everyone who knows like 
Victoria's, I did a workshop, I think, called Discover and Monetize Your Expertise. I think that's that what it was, what it was, was. in. Okay. And it was like all about like how to find your expertise and what's your zone of genius and what should you talk about online. And it had like these different categories because I studied how to become a micro celebrity. And being a micro celebrity means that you are famous for being you. You have a community who is obsessed with you for how you are, nothing else. And like, bleh, like sometimes I just have to give myself my own advice. Um, but yeah, in there, there's a worksheet where you have to list out your experiences, your knowledge, your passions, your weird weird things about you. I love that part. I call it freak factor because we are all huge weirdos, especially my neurodivergent fam. We got some weird likes and like that makes you you and you're so right. Like you are, if you look at that list of things, like that is who you are. That is what you can be known for. And that is how you stand out. And I always tell my clients this when they're like, what's my competitive advantage? Why am I different? Why would someone hire me over someone else? Even as we're scaling, right? Like I know scaling entrepreneurs who are like getting to the next level in their business. And now they're getting compared to bigger creators and bigger business owners and bigger, like I have a hair salon and, and like this kind of client, like everything. And they're like, why me? I'm like, exactly why you, why you? You're the competitive advantage. You are the number one differentiator in your business. And obviously like that gets a little difficult sometimes when you're building a business around yourself because you feel like you're carrying the weight of that business but like that is so special because there's nothing that you can do that is wrong and that's like, like a little narcissistic but like go in with that mentality nothing I do is wrong everything I do is exactly right I'm worthy as I am right now people will love every single thing I say from every perspective because people are following you like Victoria said for each different one of those categories some people like me because I'm a weirdo and I like manifestation some people hire me literally for intuitive business readings because I love reading tarot cards and doing Reiki and some some people have no idea that I do that at all and they just want business strategy right and like I get to be both of those people and like that's the thing like that's why people want you and it's like don't be scared of that don't be scared to show that don't be scared to talk about that and everything and like I, I do that worksheet with my clients and, I, and not I stole it from I love you it. like so it's this not bitch. necessarily like stole but like <laughs> Like, I'm like, okay, like my, my singer is like, she was like, I don't really know. Like, what do I do for content? I was like, okay, like, let's break that down. Like, what do you want to do? How do you want to show up online? What version of you do you want to show? And like something that I had to do and I still have to do it occasionally is like update, like how I want to show up online. What are areas of my life that I don't want to be talking about and sharing? Cause it's like, everything is content, but not everything is content. Okay. Make that very, True. very clear for yourself. Choosing what parts and how you want to show that and everything and like reevaluate every like three to six months is really important. And the second thing I will say is this was the thought earlier that came back. Um, nice. Define what you want ADHD to mean for you. Mm -hmm. You have the choice. Remember, ADHD is just a DSM-5, ADD, ADHD is just a DSM-5 diagnosis. Like, what do you want that label to mean for you? What do you want? How do you want to interact with that? How do you want to show up? Who do you want to tell? What do you, you get to choose what that means for you. Some people don't want to use the label and like literally will not pres prescribe to that. Other people will. Mm -hmm. like, and there's like the issue I see online of making it your personality, which is, I have some negative opinions on that, but it's, you get to have that choice and just be confident in your choice. Yes, I love that. And I've been thinking a lot about why, like what I want it to mean for me. And like literally the whole reason why I finally reached out to Victoria and I was like, hey, can I talk to your mom about getting diagnosed is because I... Like for me, I want to shout it from the rooftops that I have ADHD because I am so proud of myself for like everything I've achieved in my life. And I have so many clients who come to me and they're like, okay. And I'm like, is there anything you want me to know about you before we get started? And they're like, yeah, well, I have ADHD. Like it's a bad thing. And I'm like, no, that's awesome. We can work with that. I know, I know, I know how your brain works. It's a little weird like mine. It'll be so fun. But like, I feel like I'm, I can't say that because I'm not diagnosed. So I want to be able to go on TikTok and be like, no, this is good. I have ADHD. Like we can do this. We can get through this together. And it's almost like, that community experience where I can be like, hey guys, look at this, look at this. We're, we're thriving. We're making mistakes. We have the ADHD, you know, our brains are a little kooky sometimes, but it's, it, we can do it. And I think that's what that means for me. It's like, we can do it. And I want to show people. And I think that's like what I've wanted to do my whole life is just show people they can do hard things. They can believe in themselves. They can set boundaries and go after their dreams and say no and be weird and be different. And I feel like this is just an extension of that. And I get to like, just hug a bunch of people and be like, we're okay. I like you doing that because, and like, I want to see this content, not necessarily from you and maybe I need to make it and whatever is like, 
you know this, I have a lot of, on Instagram, a reason why I hate it is somehow my feed is a lot of ADHD business coaches who I don't mm -hmm. like their advice. I don't like how they talk. I have some breathing down my neck all the time and everything, copying content, whatever, and that's annoying. I don't like how they talk about it and I don't like the struggles that they talk about online. And I don't feel like I can relate. And to mm -hmm. me, like that makes me one, then feel like a fraud. That's something I have to evaluate and everything. I don't see myself, like you're talking about like, oh, the biggest struggle, like you are, you're thinking too much about the name of your program and how to do this and everything. And I'm like, no, like, I leave naming my programs to the literal last second and then have anxiety, or I just <laughs> don't give it a name at all and just give up like on mine that. Vic mine and Victoria's <laughs> business names are Ashley Milky Coaching LLC and Victoria Vance <laughs> Coaching LLC because there was no way I was spending time on that. I do not care. And it's just like, in my, and then my struggles are actually like, I have never been successfully able to film a day in my life because I forget the amount of mornings halfway filmed or just the evening, like I have never successfully filled an entire day. <laughs> and like, it's stupid, but like, it's just annoying to me that like, I've always forgotten. And like the amount of, I'm like, should I post it? I'm like, no, cause like I said, it was going to be a whole day. And then like, I'm self-conscious about certain things and everything. And it's just like, that's something I have to deal with. But like, I know I cannot be the only one. Like all of you people Same. who do it day in the life, like. To me, I'm like, that's hard because then your brain is on thinking about content 24 seven all day, which I don't like. And I have a really hard time. And like with yeah. ADHD, like that's hard to stay on that all day and everything. And so it's like, yeah, that's a struggle for me. But I don't yeah. see anybody talking about that. I should talk about that because you know, I don't talk about it because I just do it. Like I have filmed many day in the lifes that are mornings in the life <laughs> or up to the afternoon in the life or simply the dinner of a life. But I still say a day in the life of a full-time content creator and business <laughs> owner. And then it's like just what I ate for breakfast <laughs> or it's just like me going shopping. Like when I was like, come shopping with me for whatever, for my photo shoot or get ready with me for my photo shoot. And it's like, we actually didn't get ready. You just watch me work out. But I never talk about that because I'm like, I've worked through that and I don't care. And like, that's part of perfectionism that I've learned to manage like I literally don't care and I'm almost like in my head I'm like it's for the content because guess what someone's gonna comment and be like what the heck where's the rest of the video and I'm like thank you for the engagement I appreciate it but yeah so I mean I guess I can sh and I feel like too for me is like I'm trying to be more authentically myself without masking and I feel like by getting diagnosed for ADHD I just like I haven't felt comfortable talking about like how I manage things because I I feel like I'm I don't this is like who's to say you know I, there's no proof. It's just in my head and confirmed by an ADHD coach. So who's just say? Who can't um, diagnose? Who can't diagnose? So, I, but but I feel like if I have the diagnosis, I can be like, hey guys, guess what? Like this is this is my my truth. And now I have this whole new world of things that I can talk about and experiences that I can relate to people because I know like. 90% of my clients have ADHD, like diagnosed ADHD, and they always tell me, and I'm like, it's fine, same undiagnosed but same but now I can be like no same 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 and I can create content to show people like hey my brain didn't want to do stuff so I went to a coffee shop today and I sat for two hours and I hyper focused in the best way possible and I was done working for the day that's so cool but also like I used to overwork myself because I would hyper focus all day and then I would hyper focus all night and then it's like what did you do why did you do that and so there's like so many things that I think we can share fascinating what a yeah. mind blown yeah to me, it just is annoying to see all of the creators and it's, they talk about a lot of very generic problems and people could have these problems. Do not get me wrong. Personally, for me, I don't feel like I relate. That's fine. I don't need to relate to everything online, right? And like, I don't put mm -hmm. hate to these creators. I don't do anything, but it's, it's something to think about and like shifting, is it my content, your content, whatever. And like building a community based off of that is like, I know I cannot be the only one struggling with that. Like, yeah. I know we, I can, we cannot be the only one struggling with certain things and everything. I know we both struggled and talked about it of like being alone in our business. And so we just started talking about our problems. And then like that is like, we are not the only ones alone. And there's mm -hmm. even more issues that I probably haven't even talked about. And like last week, I literally told Ashley all about my therapy session and RSD and feeling a fraud and ADHD because I knew she would relate in some type of way. And like, it was good information and she did. And she wanted, she was like, that's so interesting. This means this, and this means this. And like processing that together was really helpful and everything. And I yeah. was like, for me, I feel like a fraud now because of this, but it's like, I know I'm not, I have the neuropsychological exam. I know that. And it's like also reminding yourself like how that shows up. What, like if I don't experience RSD anymore, but it's like, 
how it showed up is proof that it was ADHD in certain True. ways and everything. And like, that's really important to talk about that and like have that out there. And I think Elise Myers, even though like her content genuinely never shows up on my feed, I have no idea why, but like, she I know she's so commented yeah, and liked on one of my videos and I freaked out and I was like, we have made it ladies and gentlemen, because this video only had a hundred views and she saw it. And I was like, I'm famous. So, um, which, <laughs> in my opinion, I find wild. Cause I don't know if like you ever like, you, you like, like something and then you scroll. And if I see something as like two likes, I often just like scroll again. Cause I'm like, this probably isn't for me. And like, not to say like, I could just be seeing it earlier or whatever, but like, yeah. If it's somebody new, I often wouldn't. But something she said is like recently is she wants to talk about how like mental health, but in like a regular way and not necessarily like talking about it in mental health, but just has it ever like a normal conversation as you're flowing in talking about the weather yeah. and everything. And it's like, I've always thought that. And I was like, thank you. Like somebody else said it, who's like a bigger figure and everything. And I'm like, that makes me feel really comfortable. And like what I'm doing online, how I'm showing up and everything, because it's like, that's something I want to see, so I'm not the only one. And it's totally. one that goes back to, like, permission, seeing it, everything. And it's, like, it's so helpful. Like, talking about ADHD in a way that's not necessarily, like, ADHD. I like talking about it in a way that's, like, This is my ADHD. life. It kind of shows up in my life. Like, this is how it kind of is. I kind of work with it. I kind of vibe with it. Sometimes I hate my brain. There's some days that are really hard. Sometimes it's really hard to make my b basic needs. But then it's okay because that's not every single day. And we live. We vibe. Mm -hmm. We work on it. And... We are just human. Totally. Yeah. And I can even see that being true in like, I made a video about seasonal depression in like totally normal way. Like, a, hey, I had this thought and I realized this thing and I realized I can cope with it in this way. And like, those are the conversations we need to have. And this is why we create this podcast because community is so important. It's like, it's one of my authentic like uh, values is community. So an app while I was in college that I had to build, there was a project, group project or whatever, and you're talking about like how to use AI to help people live to 100 or past 100. I don't remember the full project. And basically like my group, we were talking a lot about death because we kind of were focusing on like the ending of your life, not like the beginning. You could focus on any area or whatever. It was a weird project and semester long. And so I want to focus on like how to make people live longer when they're old, already old age and but also even at a younger age and grief and everything because we if you don't know like grief don't like literally kills basically if a female in the relationship dies the male will actually die like within the next two to three years like 80 percent chance because like he doesn't know how to cope with it and everything which like my grandfather is like um a prime example of this for marrying somebody three months later and he was like a sugar daddy for her because oh he didn't want to be alone and everything God. and he just like does whatever she says because like well, he because beat death. He it's like he beat death and everything, but it's like it's something to think about. And so <laughs> I wanted to focus on that. And like, I know like from my dad dying at a very young age, everything. And like, whenever there's been like a lot, of, I've been near a lot of death and everything. Community is what helps grow and like go through that time. And it's so important to have a community and everything. And like, we have a really hard time with building relationships and every one in America, but also like in the society that we do be living in, whatever. My, our app was focused on like helping you have conversations around grief and these hard conversations, what to do and everything. And basically AI to help structure that almost like a therapist is replying, like, how do I want to reply or whatever? Or like, how do I reply to this boy or whatever? And like, this is helpful guidance in that. And so I said to my teacher, like, oh, this has helped to build community around death and everything. And he was like, community doesn't help that. And I was like, you're wrong. And like, what a sad, I'm lonely man. Yeah, no, it's, it's like that TikTok I sent you. I wish I had like a link to these things, but where the creator was like, we have romanticized individual partners and think that's the only form of love that we can have is singular partnership, right? So like, I think of like when people have people who pass away and it's like, well, let me lean on my husband. Let me lean on my wife. Let me lean on my partner, right? To deal with those things. But it's like, no, it's like, why are we not romanticizing community love? Where are the songs about friendships? Where are the movies about friendships, about community, about people coming together? 
together and bonding and supporting each other because that makes a difference. Every instant in my life where I have felt like I have grown the most, it, it's not a huge community either. It's there's like a network of people who are supporting me. And again, it's not huge, but it's people who I can lean on. I can ask for help. I can They can come to my rescue when I need them. And there's this like quote online in a lot of the self-help world that it's like, no one's coming to save you. And it's supposed to be inspiring and tell you to like take action and get your shit together and live your life. But it's like, for people who are hyper independent, like that is not great to hear that no one's coming to save you and you're alone because you're not alone. And there's a world that exists where many people can come to save you and you don't have to wait for them. You can build that community, that space where you have not saviors, but people who you can get support from when you maybe can't do it on your own. It's okay. And it's, that's one of the importance of this. That's why like I've had people get like emotional and body doubling and having that experience of like people just offering help and everything because it's like when we are in the hyper independence, like we, our society, especially like in America is built off of hyper independence as well. And like with ADHD, not being diagnosed if you're younger is like, I have to do everything alone. People don't understand like what I'm going through and everything. And like, which causes a lot of hyper independence with Wait, ADHD. It but, reminds me of when we were in the elevator and Elliot, our neighbor was like, oh, Victoria, you're going to Mexico. Um, I should have asked you like, do you need help? Is there anything I could have helped you do like is there anything I can help you do before you go and Victoria's like oh I just don't know how to ask for help elevator doors close <laughs> and I like my brain I just I'm not used to it and I was just like I don't know I, I was like my brain like froze I was like you want to help I don't know me? how to ask know. for help I was like I don't know and, and like I do know how to ask for help in like certain ways but like in that situation yeah. I was like I don't know how to ask for help. Like I was like, I, it was also like, I literally was leaving in like 10 hours. Like there really wasn't that much right. else for him to do. So it's like, it if he had really asked funny. earlier, possibly there could have been something, but basically I was just like, I don't know what you want to help me. <laughs> Why? 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 Why do you want to do that? What's the catch? <laughs> like, what do you need from me to do that? Like, okay. So that means I have to do And it's like, sometimes like you, we aren't used to people being nice and like, I'll just help you. Like, don't worry. Like you need something like, can I do something for you or whatever? And it's like often it's just so weird to experience at first. And mm. when you don't have those secure attachments or anything, like it can be hard. Like often with hyper independence, you're not going to have like a secure attachment basically because that's like what hyper independence is and everything. It also goes to something we've talked about is like, you don't, it's not one person for everything. Mm. You do not go to your husband, Adrian for everything. You don't go I walk out <laughs> to the most part with Adrian. Like he's not going to provide every single thing you need. It's like you need multiple mm -hmm. people in your life. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a hundred people, mm -mm. but it can't be, be like one. four, two, what, three even. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. Like when, if I want to go on a walk, Adrian makes a big deal about it because he doesn't like walking. So obviously I need to find a person to fill that hole, which is how Victoria and I became friends, right? Or even like if I want to dive into my deepest traumas, sometimes Victoria's just a better partner for that because Adrian realized what was his greatest trauma he told us about whenever we were, he was over, you were over. I don't even know, but it was the lamest thing in the world. Not the Something something about preschool oh 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 whenever he was in kindergarten his mom dropped him off for school and he would like scream and cry because he had to go to school and he just wanted to be with his mom sorry adrian if you don't want me revealing your traumas to the world but like if that's the biggest one um like i don't know like maybe there's more to explore with that man we got a whole lifetime together for him to re remember his trauma but like you know sometimes it's just process some stuff with victoria first you know yeah, and or like that's why we have go oh, that's why we have like coaches and therapists and like a whole network work of people to support us because not one person can be everything or hold space for all the things or you know fulfill all your authentic needs right my needs are like community creativity uh spiritual like all these things like not one person's gonna fulfill all of that for me in a sense cruel to think that one person can yeah. because that's like a, a lot giant of pressure ass. i personally failed in like younger self in relationships and everything looking back at that like I did expect every, like too much from one person. Like I know totally. that now. And like, you know, sometimes when I was in like a long-term relationship as I would like let my friends kind of go and everything because mm -hmm. I was like so focused on that. And then I like didn't incorporate them back in or anything. And like, that's something to like work on. That's something to think about and everything. And then like codependency and hyper-independence is like something to work on. It's a conversation for another day.
Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, I've been through that where it's like you get in a relationship and you make that person your everything because you think you're supposed to be your everything because that's how America romanticizes relationships. But in reality, they could never be your everything. Like, why can't you have friends? And you know, you know what that really goes back to? Like when we used to sell women into like having dowries and getting with men and like shipping them off to the men and then they get rid of all their friendships because their number one duty is to serve their man. It's like we take that idea and then we're like, okay, well, this partner is going to care for me because they're the only one that's going to care for me now. No more family because I'm shipped off to be with this partner. It's like, ooh, ooh, what generational trauma do we need to rewire in our brains? Because that one man or woman does not need to be your everything or person, um, really does not and should not. And it's like overwhelming for that person too, if they are. Yeah. yeah. And like, we, we can talk about this. Ashley has been like a healthy influence in my life for like relationships and everything in a multitude of ways, honestly. I mean, I even told you like last week why is like, I don't know. I don't know, you've done a lot of good things. <laughs> Congrats, Ashley. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here to be the best. <laughs> um, but it's like, I mean, like I I apparently have done that for you is like you think, I think you speak so effortlessly in your content and I'm like, oh man, like, I'm so disgruntled in my content, everything. Like, I think so hard about, I'm like, when will it ever happen? Editing these podcasts, I'm like, I can't wait for the day I don't have to edit it because I, like, am talking horribly about myself when doing it because I'm like, oh, she just said it so well. And, like, I took so long to get to the point. That's something I need to work on. I'm doing public speaking soon. Like, now I'm extra nervous about oh that. My. And I'm like, and you know what's funny? What? You know, and you know what's funny? I watch you like, t- like talk however you want to talk, and it works. It works for you. And I'm like, and on the flip side, I'm like, man, she doesn't have to talk perfectly to like get people to understand what she's saying. Like she can just say what she wants and they follow. And it's like, so for me, it's like, I think I, because I'm a perfectionist and like I was in musical theater and I've always been public speaking, like literally public speaking since like sixth grade. Like, I have perfected how to say my point in that way. So like, that's cool. And some people would like want that. Um, But for me, I'm like, she didn't have to be perfect to do that. Like she didn't have to work hard and be perfect. Like she gets to talk and that's all that matters is she just talks and people love it. And so like, I think that's cool that we can both see those qualities in each other because we both have those qualities in ourselves. Because at the end of the day, like we both are very thoughtful. We're both great at speaking. We both have intelligent ideas that impact people that we want to share with the world. And it's cool because we both see it in each other in different ways and ways that we already have within ourselves, right? Because I'm like, that's so cool. She can say what what she wants. And I'm like, well, I can say what I want too. And you're like, that's so cool. She can make a point. It's like, yeah, you're making amazing points too. So it's like, and that's what's true when you, like see people who you look up to and you're like dang I wish I could do that it's like ah, 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 you can what part of that do you already have within yourself because envy jealousy like all of those feelings mean there's something in you that you already have but for some reason you've casted a shadow on and you haven't allowed yourself to expose that to the world um and I know like this happened for me whenever I wanted to be an indoor cycling instructor but I was like I'm not good enough. I'm not fit enough to be an indoor cycling instructor. No one would want someone who looks like me to do that. And there was this instructor and she was like, I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with her. Her energy is amazing. Her storytelling is amazing. She's so inspiring. And the minute I was like, hey, I'm those things too. I was like, oh, I see what I, that's why I was mad about it because that's me. But I didn't allow myself to have that light shown on me, you know? I'm good at, you struggle with a little bit what you're good at, I struggle. And it's like, okay, like there's things that we both work on and we're influencing each other on it even without trying per se. And it's like, yeah. that's good. That's healthy and everything. And it's not that I'm like, I hate Ashley. She can do that so well. I'm so jealous. I'm like, oh, okay, like I like how she did that. Like what are some notes? Sometimes like I only jot down notes like from Ashley's and I'm like, <laughs> she went from this to this to this. I'm like, okay, so that's an interesting approach to like think about next time. And I don't necessarily like, I'm like, okay, looking at it while filming next time. And I'm like, do these yeah. things. I'm like, you know, like it's going to slowly happen. What did like, I like? How did that inspire me? Yeah. And it's like, those are the type of things is like, think a have a second thought of like, okay, I thought bad about myself. Like why, what was that? What was causing that and everything? Like, how can I possibly start incorporating this or whatever? And it's like one that's just been an insecurity of mine. And I've just always thought that. And that's one going into me talking negatively about myself, which I still have to work on in that way. And like in public speaking, I'm still speaking negatively about myself, like in my Mm. mind, watching it back or whatever. And 
but I'm getting better at it and everything. And I've only been doing this for a year. You've had doing this a lot longer. So it's like, I can't compare myself there. Maybe no. in two years, I'll be there. Like, that's okay. Yeah. I don't have to be there today. And it's like, I'm going to show up how I can today and we'll continue to get better and everything. As well as, um, what's the last thing I wanted to say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I will, well, what I'll say then is like, we are, this is why we're so dedicated and I'm really excited for the communities that we will be creating over the next year and the community experiences we're going to create for people, because I think it is really hard to, you know, find a relationship where we, like we have, where, you know, we can inspire each other and not take anything personally. And like our experiences, like we don't put on the other person, you know, like obviously we, we've never talked about the fact that like this whole content thing or how we look up to each other influence each other right but like we do and it's hard to find people like that it's hard to find people who can expand you and give you inspiration and give you tips on how they're doing it like that's an intimate thing that people don't have a lot of access to especially as you're scaling a business you're becoming a content creator you're working in a creative field there's so much we could talk about just being a creative in general an artist a designer a content creator whatever and like I'm really excited because we're going to create really cool places for people to tap into stuff like this where they can be like, and even complimenting each other. Like when's the last time you had a friend sit down and be like, I loved how you made that video. I love how you show up authentically. Like that never happens. And so like, I'm excited because that's my intention for all the communities that we create where people have a chance to see each other and recognize each other and not just in the background be like, oh, that person inspired me. What the heck? But they're like, Hey, you inspired me. How did you do that? That's so cool. Tell me your secrets, right? Like, that changes your freaking life. Like it does. It does. And I think something when you're in like a negative mind space, reflecting back is like, I struggled to possibly, not necessarily like to have a relationship with you. I was like, she has like, she's doing everything already. She's doing what I want. And I was like, I'm not there yet. And it's like, I had to work on that within myself to get there and everything. And like, not judge myself. I'm, I'm just going to keep trying, whatever. Like she doesn't fully know what she's doing either. But like when you're in that lower position is like, I was thinking, I was like, she knows everything. Like she, like she doesn't want to have a conversation with me. She knows everything. Like, <laughs> oh my God, like what am I even doing? Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. And it's like, then now she's here like, being like, oh yeah, you've helped me so much with doing that. And it's just like, you don't know what's going on in another person's mind. Stop assuming. Like you so do not true. know and just try, just have a conversation. And it's like, with hyper independence, like we often think like everyone's kind of out to get you. You have to do it alone. You can't have those things. And it's like, it takes time to taste desensitization to that and everything. And like Ashley and I are a great example to doing that for each other. And it's like, it is okay. Yeah. And like, imagine how differently you would operate in the world if you always thought people thought the best of you. Like, cause literally this whole time we're both like, oh my God, she's so cool. Look at her doing her thing over there. And Victoria's like, oh my God, look at Ashley. She's so cool. They're fucking, she's crushing it. Like we're both hyping each other up in our heads, but it's so easy to be like, oh, like Victoria said, oh, she wouldn't want to talk to me because she's so good at what she does. Or Victoria would never want to give me her advice on how she shows up authentically because why would she help me do that? Because whatever, right? But like, no, like if we thought that everyone's thinking the best of you at all times, like, dude, that changes how you operate in the world, how you create content. We come back to the idea of like, who are you creating content for? If you create content where you think everyone's thinking the best of you, how are you going to show up? If you manage your ADHD and you interact with people, even when it comes to rejection or imposter syndrome, if you think that people are thinking the best of you which why would we not think that you're gonna change how you show up and how you think about yourself facts yeah big facts nothing but big facts oh this episode is so long so long <laughs> we've been sitting here for two hours oh my god i need a, okay we need bean bags digress shun um if anyone wants to buy me and victoria big fluffy white bean bags cream bean bags they can ship it to my apartment. You can get it when you come back from Mexico. We'll ship it around the world for you. Um, please, we're going to put an Amazon wish list if anyone wants to buy us bean bags because I cannot sit in this chair anymore. I need to be so much more comfy than this. My hips, oh my God. Two hours. My shoulder, I cannot wait to get it. I don't really know where to get it. I need to research the massages here. Like I started to try and do it while I was out the other day, but then I gave up. We're, we got to get... I was like, well, you're coming soon. So I'm like, I'll just wait or whatever. But I'm like, no, nah, I should get two. But then I'm like, I don't really know where I should go. 
We yeah. will not get to the client theme of the week. I feel like this episode is very long enough. So if you want to know yes. how we're helping our clients, um, go watch past episodes or literally follow us on TikTok because we talk about that all the time. We'll talk about it next episodes. I feel like there's so many things for you to process, consume. Make sure you like the podcast, subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review. Tell us what you thought, what you got out of today's episode, how you're feeling. Follow the Living Adventures Co. social media platform. So that's it for us. And I will see you next week. Max is going crazy. <laughs> All right. Bye.